This is why I can't go on vacation, y'all. So this past weekend, I went to North Carolina. Absolutely beautiful, first time there. And while I'm away, I'm, you know, basking in the security of knowing that what's waiting for me on the other end of that weekend is Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, recently announced in the Nintendo Direct, Obvious slam dunk, it's coming from Aspire, who's known for all of their port work, and they've done a really good job specifically with the Star Wars titles. I got the Platinum Trophy for Republic Commando. They did all of the up and mod support and achievement additions to KOTOR 2 on PC. Like, even though they've lost a lot of faith from people with how they handled things with the KOTOR 2 DLC on Switch, and of course with the KOTOR remake, I still have faith in their porting abilities, like that's what they're known for. So Classic Collection was this kind of slam dunk that I was also looking forward to buying on my PlayStation merely because to get the Platinum Trophy on one of my most played set of games, absolutely no questions asked. And I go away, and as I'm away, the Star Wars community sets on fire. Battlefront Classic Collection is an absolute mess, and so many people rush their reviews for this game because it's what I like to call the does it work review, where they fire up this old classic game getting re-released, does it work because I already know what this game is from top to bottom, and when it functions, barely might I add, because clearly not a lot of people did a ton of testing for it, yeah, they phone in the review, put it out there in time for the embargo, and we see the results of it, and it's really disappointing because this is a game that immediately when firing up Battlefront 1, I knew something was off by sound alone. It seems like they tried to use, if I were to wager a guess, some type of noise removal, and it not only makes a lot of the sounds very hollow, but listen to the loading screen, the iconic Battlefront 1 loading screen. Listen to it in the collection. And if you're not a freak like me, who's played a ton of Battlefront 1 and 2, you may not recognize what sounds really off about that. But we've done videos on Battlefront 1 here, when it got that big update that added multiplayer to the game. We made that video and I want to say 2020, but we've also covered Battlefront 1 on Retro Rebound twice. And the load screen is like a big deal to me because it's so iconic. So take a listen now to the original load screen. And I know you think I'm insane, but right when I heard that, I knew something was afoot. I was like, this, something's off here. Even if that wasn't the case, the download size is over 60 gigabytes when you're on PlayStation and you see the PS4 and PS5 version, each version's in the 30 gigs. How did it get that big, man? What? These are two very simple shooting games that are getting ported forward. They're not more than a couple of gigabytes each. How, how did the file size bloat this much. I don't have the technical know-how to answer that question, but right away there were two red flags that said to me, okay, there's a problem here with Battlefront Classic Collection, and it does get worse. So we're going to talk about that, ladies and gentlemen, if you are new here and you're into the latest and greatest in gaming, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing, and before we begin, a quick word from today's sponsor. The following video is brought to you by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up, with each lesson filled with hands-on problem solving. And for me, as a gamer, anything involving hands-on is how I connect with stuff best ever since I was a little kid. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. And whether you're in school now, thirsting for more places to learn, or you haven't been in school for a while, Brilliant is perfect for learners of any level. They've actually added new data content, and there's a way you can gain insight by working with real data sets from sources like Starbucks, X, or Twitter, Spotify, and more. So you're really working with stuff that helps you connect closer with the lesson at hand. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Mr. Matty Place or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So for starters, this has gone so south. Aspire issued an apology four days ago. It's a very brief one saying, we'd like to thank the Battlefront community for their overwhelming support and feedback for the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection release at launch. We experienced critical errors with our network infrastructure. The result was incredibly high ping matchmaking errors, crashes, and servers not appearing in the browser. Since launch, we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability, and we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilized to prevent further outages. This is what I mean by phoning in reviews, because I don't know how people confidently release 
Battlefront reviews without testing the multiplayer, which is a massive component for the longevity of the game. Don't get me wrong, as a kid, like many of you out there, grew up only playing Battlefront PvE, but PvP is a massive part of it, especially nowadays in the post EA DICE Battlefront games where like that was all multiplayer. So it just blows my mind that this is overlooked because for those who don't know, Battlefront Classic Collection launched with three dedicated servers. Now the claim here in this letter is that they just didn't have them appearing in the browser. And I'm inclined to believe that because when you go into the browser now, you can see there are tons of servers up and available, people playing. Battlefront 1 multiplayer feels horrendous. The ping is terrible. It's literally unplayable. It's quite literally unplayable. Even when you look at some of the old Battlefront 1 gameplay, from when I did my multiplayer video on that here on this channel, way, way better, way more responsive. And especially we know it's a Battlefront 1 issue because when I go into Battlefront 2, it honestly works fine. Like I don't have really any complaints here outside of when I die, the camera freaks out and then I spawn back into the game. There's also weird issues with how the text has been updated. It's not really centered properly with the remainder of the UI on screen. So it looks really awful and out of place and stretched in certain parts. Like some of the loading screens look really wrong. And so there's little kinks here and there, but otherwise the multiplayer in Battlefront 2 from my experience works fine. But Battlefront 1 got done super dirty from top to bottom in my experience. Not only is it the buggiest where I experienced multiple crashes while playing the game, it also is very much ignored in the trophy and achievement list. And that hurts the most because for me, I love the idea of taking these games from the past, bringing them to the future. I would love to get 1000 gamer score on Xbox, but I want them to do their own platinum trophy equivalent. I've been saying that for years. So I'm a big platinum trophy fan. I don't hunt as much as I used to, but when it's games from my childhood, oh, you bet, because I know these things from top to bottom, I want to get the platinum trophy. Just like I mentioned, I did with Republic Commando. If they ever bring the original KOTOR one and two to PlayStation, you know, I'm going to get the platinums for those, like no doubt about it. Like that is to me, one of the crown jewels in gaming. So no doubt I want to do that for Battlefront 1 and 2. First mistake, shared trophy list. What are we doing here? Number two is that most of the trophy list, if not all of it, is for Battlefront 2. Why is Battlefront 1 so ignored? It's beyond me, especially because in many ways, it's the better game. Some people in their coverage, I think, of the Battlefront Classic Collection has been woefully inaccurate. They're like, this game is so buggy. It's way buggier than I remember. But like, if you look at, for example, our Retro Rebound video, you'll see frequently the AI, especially in Battlefront 2, which was made within a year's time, breaks often. Like, it is a very buggy game. I don't think that disrupts or ruins everything, but it absolutely is rose-tinted glasses playing a big factor in what Battlefront was, which is a phenomenal PvE experience, putting you in the boots of your favorite soldiers across various factions in the Star Wars universe, but polished it was not in its sequel. In its first game, it was a lot better, I would say. Uh, the map design was much more improved. It was much more concentrated and centralized because you weren't like flying into space. There weren't space battles. Whereas Battlefront 2 is more about modes. Battlefront 1 is, is just setting the table for everything from Galactic Conquest to Instant Action to the campaign, all that stuff. But it's really not even just about the quality of the product, which we're gonna talk about extensively here. It's also about the blatant thievery here. So this is actually, I have to admit, kind of hilarious. This started off two weeks before the game had come out. It was said there that Aspire admits that there was a mistake of using uncredited mod work in a trailer for its Battlefront Classic Collection, swearing to the internet the final game won't have any of that. You see the statement here is, we'd like to thank the passionate Star Wars Battlefront community for bringing this to our attention when capturing placeholder footage for our announcement last fall. We mistakenly included content that is not in the current product and that mistake made it into the final cut. The upcoming release of Battlefront Classic Collection does not include any code or content that is taken from uncredited sources. What they saw was here that modder I am Shaman actually brought DLC that was originally in just the Xbox versions via back compat to PC, reskinning two existing characters in Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress. And to the naked eye, they say here from IGN, the modded Kit and Asajj look like their DLC counterparts, but eagle-eyed players knew that they had the same default animations and attacks as the other heroes. This means that in the mod, Asajj does not hold her unique lightsabers in one hand, instead wielding two separate lightsabers, one in each hand like Ayla does in the original game. Similarly, Kit fights like Mundi. Still, the mod proved popular with the Battlefront community and found an audience. 
Redditors noticed it first with TMT Mr. Excitement saying that the Battlefront Classic Collection trailer below suggests players will not get the original Xbox DLC. Rather, it looks like developer Aspire uses I Am Shaman's mod, lifting it from ModDB to create the models for Kit and Asajj. And what's worse is I Am Shaman reckons the version of the mod that's used is outdated. And now that they've denied it, you can see here on screen I Am Shaman actually dove in and shows how it is using even the same bugs and animations that were from the mod and that Aspire lied. And, and the first time they tried to use mod work, they did credit it with KOTOR 2. They were like, we're going to do the restore content mod. We're going to bring into the full game. Seemed a lot more collaborative. Okay, cool. That all fell apart. They were silent for a while. And then out of nowhere, we're like, hey, we're canceling it. And we're going to give you like, I think five bucks in a, in a game credit of your choice, which I hope no one accepted. And then you look here and they say to back up this claim, this is from I Am Shaman. Here's a screenshot of the bubble effect taken in 2020. It's hard to make out in the video since it's in motion, but trust me that it is the same. So not only is the game a complete clusterfuck, they seemingly stole a modder's work. What is this fall off? This needs to be studied, man. Aspire used to be so good. And especially because they worked with modders. They didn't have to steal from them. I'm sure any modder, I don't want to assume too much, would be overjoyed to say like, hey, your work is so good. We want to include that in the core product, just like they were going to do for KOTOR 2. Hey, the restore content mod, which makes KOTOR 2 a million times better. We're going to include that in the base game. I'm sure everyone in all parties was thrilled to now give this finalized release to a game that's directly behind me that most of us absolutely adore. And for it to not happen was soul crushing, but I digress. I feel like everyone could have been in agreement. So why the sneaky behavior? For those who don't know the history of this, Battlefront 1 had a missing map in Jabba's Palace that was added via DLC. Most people experienced that with the backwards compatibility program on Xbox Series X, which you can still experience now and enjoy. It actually goes full screen and everything. And I got to say that I would much rather recommend you that experience over what you get in the classic collection. And then Battlefront 2 gets a lot more. You get Asajj Ventress, Kit Fisto, as we talked about. These are playable heroes in the assault mode. You also get four maps. You get like Renvar Citadel, Renvar Harbor. You get a Bespin Cloud City map. You also get Jabba's Palace. You get Hunt on a couple of maps. You get Hero Assault on a couple of maps now. So it just blows the content wide open. More options on all these maps. And for those who haven't experienced them, Get a little new flavor here. Renvar Harbor particularly being my favorite of all of the new additions here. So there is something to be said here and how it was such an easy slam dunk and it's completely been missed. So missed in fact that you'll see here Battlefront Classic Collection is Steam's ninth worst scored game ever. I'm going to get out of my soapbox for a moment here. Pardon me. I've been an avid Star Wars defender for years now. I'm not saying everything that's coming out of like the Disney era has been gold. I'm not going to defend the sequel trilogy. The vision's not there. I'm not that kind of guy. But what I will say is there's been an overstatement online, particularly with YouTubers, on how everyone's got to hate Star Wars now. Like, we all have got to hate Star Wars now. Star Wars is bad, bad, bad. It's treated horribly. And we should just forget it ever existed. Now, call me crazy, but when I see reactions like this to this extreme with this much anger and this much confusion and this many videos being made about it, it's almost like Star Wars really does matter and people care about it particularly star wars battlefront matters a lot this is many people's childhood why do we continue to push this narrative that star wars no longer matters it needs to go die it's like no people clearly care about it if they're this mad about it it's getting downvoted this much at least that's my read of the situation anyway i'm just tired of the constant star wars negativity because i think a lot of great stuff has come out of the franchise in recent years but nonetheless there's also one other frustrating bug that has popped up alongside the myriad of others out there. For you Xbox fans out there, you should pay attention to this. This comes from trueachievements.com, where they say, Star Wars Battlefront Collection has the worst kind of unattainable Xbox achievement. They say players are reporting that the Martial Commander achievement, which unlocks once you've popped all other achievements in the game, is failing to unlock. So far, seven True Achievements members have met the requirements to unlock this achievement, but not one of them has it, which is a shame. Hopefully, we'll see a fix soon alongside other issues players are reporting. That's the other thing with the achievement list. I mean, this bug is terrible. It's the worst type of bug, as True Achievements put it perfectly, that you can have. But the, the thing that oh, always, always cracks me up when I look at an achievement list like we got in Battlefront Classic Collection is how they didn't capitalize on such obvious things. Like, they're, they're saying, go get Captain Rank, get Van guard rank it like little simple things get the energy regen medal like why are these the achievements why not 
win Galactic Conquest with each of the factions. Like, just that's four achievements right there. Four trophies right there. Why isn't it that? Why is Battlefront 2 stubbed? Why are they in a combined list? Why isn't it both games getting their own respective trophy achievement list? Like, it's such a blatantly missed opportunity, and it's stunning because they just did a Tomb Raider collection not even a month ago, and it was getting rave reviews like, hey, this is fantastic. So clearly they were overburdened, I'd say, and they completely missed the mark on what was one of the easiest slam dunks. This is why I say nothing nice is guaranteed in gaming. You look at this, the talent's there, they have a reputation for doing the thing you exactly want them to do, which is port the old game you love, make sure it works, which by the way, some of the controls are still awful. I think some people also forgot that. Like dodge rolling in Battlefront 2 is with the circle button, you can dodge roll in pretty much any direction, much more mobile, much more fluid. Whereas Battlefront 1, you have to press the jump button and go sideways. A lot of people are like, why didn't you fix this? But that was part of like the original control scheme. And I'm not sure if they could go in and create a separate dodge roll button because you couldn't originally in, in the first place with the base game when you tried to reconfigure stuff because it was attached to the jump button with a specific direction being put in. So I don't know if there were certain things they could change there, but I do think a lot of people got away from the core product, remembered it fondly in a certain way, and certain critiques measure up differently to me than others. But nonetheless, it is, we can all agree, a colossal failure and disappointment. And I'm going to stick around for the updates because I love this game and I no doubt want to have my hands on it, but like we got to figure out some file compression. We got to figure out some bug stomping. We got to get that ping sorted out when it comes to Battlefront 1. Give Battlefront 1 a separate achievement trophy list. That is an absolute must at this point. Give it to us as an apology. Like figure all of this stuff out. But nonetheless, everybody, that's what's going on with Battlefront Classic Collection. It's an absolute mess right now and so shocking to see. So I leave it with you. What do you make of everything? you've seen for the Battlefront Classic Collection, let me know down below. Other than that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.